Hey guys, welcome to Crazy Days. Today we're in the kitchen. We're going to be canning squash. So I'm going to show you the process right quick. I've been at it all day. I've canned seven uh, quarts of potatoes first thing this morning. Then I started on the squash for a friend. And right now I have 14 jars sitting on my cabinet that's done. This is quart jars. I've got seven more in the canner when it uh, cools down is coming out, so that's 21. We're on the last seven jars of squash. Now, I don't think I'm going to have seven, so if we don't have enough, potatoes can at the same um, amount of time, 40 minutes. So we're going to fill up the quart jar, see how many jars we have of squash for the last canning today, and whatever's left, we've got potatoes ready. We'll finish out the can of potatoes, and guys, five canners today, pressure canners, all of them at 40 minutes a piece. I've been going since early morning, so I'm tired. If I make a mistake, y'all bear with me. Okay, one of the first things we do is we cut up the squash in round pieces like this. Once I get the squash cut up, I use this basket and I put my squash in it. I have my water boiling. I have this basket sitting in a pie pan to keep water from dripping everywhere. That's a pretty cool little idea here. Using the pie pan, just watch when you take them out that you don't have your hand under here and it's hot and it burns you. You might want to use a, a pot holder. But I sit them down in the boiling water and I leave it approximately two to three minutes. Twenty-one quarts of squash with a few more to go, and I've still got supper to cook, guys. We drain these. I put them over my pan for just a second, and I have a stainless bowl that I dump them in, and then I add more. Two to three minutes. You're through with the blanching process, and then. We just do a rotation thing. Once you get these out, you put these back in. I bring the canner back up. It has on the back side here, it has lines. I'm not sure if you can see them, but there's one here, one here, and one down where the water level is now. The bottom water level is what I need when I can quartz. So check your pressure canner for how much water, but mine, I put it up to the bottom um, level for my quartz. It looks like we're almost going to have four uh, of these filled, and that's usually what it takes to do seven uh, quarts. So we're going to be close to having our seven quarts, but we have potatoes on standby, cut and ready to go into the water. I have on the back, I have my jars in hot water. I just took this one out, and we use the tongs to take them out with. I'm going to go ahead and put my salt. I always do that first because I don't, I don't like to um, forget the salt. So I put my salt in next and then just scoop these in. And they're hot, so I try really hard not to mess them up. And that's why I have this, it's called a kitchen jig. I, this is put out by Echo. One of the 
better products that I've ever had. I've had it for probably 20 years, and it goes with me everywhere I go. It's the most handy kitchen tool that they make to me. I don't know if they even sell them. They probably sell something similar, but Echo did a wonderful job with that. And this mat, we had Dee sent me this mat. She said, I would love it. It's got these little prongs on the bottom, rubberized. It's made for, um, I don't know, I think it's a bar mat or something like that. So you spills and you've got to have something cushioned. Instead of me sitting here beating my hand, it's hot. I can do it on this. It seems to work really well. Danny was helping do this earlier. He was doing most of the cannon earlier. As far as jarring it, I was doing the cutting and the cooking and he was doing the jarring. I ran him out of the kitchen for a few minutes to do the video. So I'm having to do it all myself. Um, then I just put water and let it slowly fill up. And you see it's filling in the gaps with the water. And we're going to get it a little bit fuller. And I have a lot of people asked about debubbling. I have never debubbled. I don't usually debubble, but that right there will do it if you need it. If you want to take the little stick thing down, and but you end up mashing or messing up your squash, um, I can do that and that settles it a little more. But any way you debubble is fine or if you, whatever. That's one of the things you can do to debubble. And I'm really liking the mat because it's saving my countertop. I don't have to put a glass plate here and this doesn't jar around, move around on the glass plate. It sits still on this rubber. Um, this mat is really a, being a lifesaver right now. Um, these jar um, rings and lids that were brought to can this for a friend, she brought the gold ones and they do not have any writing, so I don't have to line anything up. I tighten it, it's warm. I don't want to burn my hands. I hand tighten, then I put it in the canner, and it's going to can for 40 minutes. Okay, this is the fourth and final, fourth and final uh, pan of squash. I'm going to be adding potatoes. We're going to see if we can't have the potatoes ready in case. And if we do not need these potatoes tonight, we will tomorrow. It's okay once you blanch them to put them in the fridge and heat them up again real quick in some hot water the second time. I've done that before. You don't want to leave it for days, but it's okay to do it overnight and heat them one more time. Okay, so I've got three done. I've got the canner on because I'm through with the potatoes. The potatoes are in this bowl here ready for when we need them. And we're going to start with jar number four, taking it out of the hot water, putting another one in, keeping our rotation going.
Okay guys, now comes the fun part of canning. When you're tired, you wore out all day long and then all this has to be washed. These are the big pots, the big pans, all the stuff that you use. You have to wash them and dry them and put them away if you're OCD like I am. ginormous, gigantic, enormous, whatever you want to call it, Tupperware bowl. This thing came in handy. You're talking about when you need something to just throw a lot of food in at one time. Thank you, Angie's Pantry. Check her out, guys. Tupperware. That's what's happening when you need handy dandy extra bowls here. Okay, guys, I want to show you two products that I'm using right now that I just started using. One of them is a drying pad. Simple, easy, nothing fancy. This thing came from the Dollar Tree, cost a dollar. It absorbs, it doesn't leave water going all over, so that's what I'm sitting my jars on and letting them drain. And all I've got to do, this can go in the washing machine, ready for next time. The pad I was talking about, this is a mat. It's rubberized. It's almost like a rubber mat that you would put on the floor. And it's got these little, you see, that's what's going down on the top of the counter to give it cushion and airflow underneath so nothing happens. So this is what the rubber mat is called. It's a kitchen bar mat, I believe is what it's called. So if you're interested in these, I'm going to try and put a, a link in the description below if I don't forget. But this is coming in handy, guys. I'm really liking the kitchen bar mat. And simply a drain, uh, it's just a, like a towel, but it's uh, absorbent. You can buy them in any Walmart's kitchen, any kitchen centers. But I found this one at Dollar Tree for a dollar and it works. 